says, Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Come on, party. Let the glory of let the glory of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Do it again. Let's go. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Lord, let the glory of the Lord let it. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. Let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let's go dance together. Let the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, let it. Let the Lord, let the joy of the Lord, let it. Let the praise, let the praise of our King, let it rise among us, let it rise. Come on, do it again. Let the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, let it. Let the joy, the joy of the Lord, let it. Let the praises, let it rise among us, let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. let it rise.
Do it, my preacher was come on and give God some praise in this place. Let me try it like this. If God has woke you up this morning with activities in your limbs, breath in your body, come on and just give God some praise. And do me a favor and begin to tell God thank you. God, I just want to tell you thank you because you've been so good. Lord, I just want to say thank you. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God's been good to me. 
So I just want to tell them thank you. I 
Jesus come say, Lord John again. Peter looked at him and said, Well, who are you to come tell us? We are in our paraphrase. Fishermen's by trade. And you coming up and telling us to go back out after we've been out all night. Peter was quick to go off at the end. But not only that, but some situations uh, in his relationship with God uh, that allowed him uh, to gain some experience uh, as it relates to this Christian walk. And it gives him the ability to minister across the sands of time. And so here it is tonight in the second letter. We see Peter even his thoughts, thoughts, one. To the believers about backsliding. Now, why was Peter having such a conversation with us? Because during Peter's time, they were backsliding. And they were being so easily persuaded away from the gospel that was preached to them. As a matter of fact, even Paul has to deal with the very same issue. Once Paul said in one of his I am surprised that after knowing and hearing the truth of the gospel, you are so quick to be driven away and drawn to another gospel. And Paul cautioned them and saying that if you hear or follow any other gospel according other than that which we have preached on to you, let the individual that's proclaiming that gospel be a curse on to you. And so, brothers and sisters, because of the backsliding that was taking place in the body of Christ during Paul's and Peter's time, and so now here Peter comes. Giving a warning about backsliding. Let's look at the two. Three verses, three parts, and we go. Again, what Peter says in verse 20. For if David have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in him and overcome. What a bad thing. The latter end is worse for him than the beginning. So here now in this morning, Peter here in verse 20 warns about the good backsliding condition. And he warns that the pages of it is that when you have already begun to be rescued from the dark world and from the clutches of sin. Once you have reached and gained salvation, and God has worked everything out for you and paved the way by His power to get you and rescue you and set you on the right path that you need to be on in your life and relationship with Him. If you have reached that point and then become polluted again, isn't that what Peter is saying? In other words, Peter is saying here, when he uses the word extinct, the word extinct in the Greek simply means to be free. It means to be untangled. And so here Peter is saying that if you find yourself going back into the sinful state that you were in prior to receiving salvation, you are entangling yourself as if you were in a net. The net is cast, wherever the net is cast. Whatever is cast upon, the individual have a difficult time freeing themselves. I'm watching here because Peter was cautioning the believers in his day and time, and he's also cautioning us today that we should not allow ourselves to be in a relationship with God and so easily backtrack from our position of salvation. But then what he says, so if 
over and turned you and placed you in a different direction. But you willfully chose to put yourself back at point A, which is the place of sin, the confusion, and darkness, the place without a word from the Lord. And you still believe, convincing yourself in your own mind by being in your own scripture interpreter without the influence and power of the Holy Ghost to justify your behavior to make your narrative. What did you brothers and sisters? Because many believers in the body of Christ are on the outside of fellowship in this very condition. They think it's cute to be a backslider. They think it's all right to be a backslider. They think really and truly that they have time to restore their fellowship as a backslider. But the end is worse because you so entangled that you could be detained in coming out of the Lord might return before you free yourself from the net. You got anybody in your family that's in a backslid condition? You need to pray for them and minister to them because they don't know the dangers that they are in. Now watch it here. Now that word entangle in the Greek put emphasis on a deep involvement. Which is saying, Peter is saying, not only did they turn from the truth of the gospel and go back to their sinful ways, but now they are deeply involved in the sinful state. They're so deep involved. That's why it's easy for them to be easily involved when it comes to the culture. That's why they have a faithful initiative when it comes to participating with the culture because now they are entangled. They are deeply influenced and involved. And what we 
have to understand, brothers and sisters, and I'm going to go to the second scripture and the second part. That a covenant relationship is one that requires a deep commitment, a deep level of faithfulness. Because, as always, the covenant together, a relationship, you honor God, and God will honor you. Watch it. But they so lack the things to be in the deep sleep. When they turn it over, they create scripture to fit their narrative. Why are they not in fellowship? That's another gospel. The gospel that we preach, it speaks clearly against that. The gospel that we preach, it clearly teaches and preaches obedience when it comes to God's word. And the gospel and the Jesus of this gospel, it does not accept all of the excuses that some people make up just to fit their narrative. Because if Jesus gave himself to die for your sins, what make you think it's okay for you to render to him a half hearted soul? Because they think it's easy and it's okay to denounce the 
power of Jesus the Christ and to reject his deity as the Son and God in the flesh. But I come to caution you today. You better stay on your fellowship. If you got somebody that you know that's out of fellowship, but now you know the importance of, of evangelizing to them because they're in a bad fix. Watch it. Because if Proverbs say when you turn it from the word, your prayers is an abomination, you can't pray your way out. God don't hear the prayers of a sinner unless it's a repentant prayer. Bible says over and over that God turned his face and his ear from the prayers of the wicked, but the prayers of the righteous he hears. But yet the world has convinced themselves that I'm all right. But I'm all right. I denounce Christ, but I'm all right. Yet Peter saying, that's far from the truth. There's no truth in it. That's the deception that, that this world has to offer. And it's been beaten down on the faith of believers for years. And it began with the invention of what they call television and radio. They didn't invent that stuff to entertain you. They invented that to occupy your mind. They invented that to take up the time that you have in the day when you could be praying, you could be meditating on the goodness of God, but then the TV invention came. in 
the music that is played across radio and the music of our children's idols or their favorite singers. And their favorite singers are participating or engaging in deep secret cults. Their, their cult activity is being displayed on the stage right before the eyes of those who are participating or purchasing tickets to see and hear them sing. They're seeing a ritual taking place before them, but because they have no knowledge of how witchcraft work, they have no knowledge of how rituals work, they see and think it's just a performance. I tell you something, I know there's something about witchcraft. I've told y'all that before. If I get you to come in certain colors, it's because I'm trying to protect myself against the spirit that's using me, but it's not going to protect you because your color is reflected protection to me. You just a willing participant. Yeah. <laughs> 
in the mud. Out there has been washed off and cleaned. It shows a picture of an individual who has given their lives to God. God has cleaned them up. God has cleaned them up. Cleaned all the dirt off of them. Put them in the right path and gave them new life. But they chose to turn from that cleaning because they are rather be muddy instead of being clean. And so Peter says that in the end, those who are on out of fellowship with God, they have made the decision to stick to the money, the muddiness of life. They have made a conscious decision to put Jesus down and pick up the sin that they were once in. And because they made such a decision, the end is worse for them. There is a punishment that's waiting for them, that's coming their direction. And when it comes, they're not going to be able to handle it. Because the Bible says that God will set the skies on fire, and the sockets will begin to melt, and the stars that were held in the sockets will begin to fall. The moon will triple wind and blood. It's a terrible day. It's on the way. And guess what? They're going to see it because they have decided to break fellowship, covenant relationship with God. But if you look in Revelation, the church won't be there when that takes place, which lets me know that those individuals who are stuck out of fellowship are in such danger that if they don't get back in fellowship, with God, the church is going to be gone, but they're still going to be here. And then it talks about the white throne judgment, where the big and the small aim and stood before God's throne to be judged according to everything that they did in the flesh. And then it says, and the books were open, and everything that's written in the book. I'm trying to tell you, brothers and sisters, you think it's cute to play around with God. You think it's cute to play around with fellowship. But the Bible says that God is keeping a written account of everything you do. It's written in the book. And you're going to be judged after giving account for it. You're going to have to tell the Lord why you changed your gender from male to female. You're going to have to answer to the Lord why you changed your your gender from female to male because your DNA can't be back. Your DNA still says male or female because God's creation is foolproof. You can't have God's creation. You gonna have to give an account as to why you were saved from being a homemaker and decided to go back to whoring on the street because God has written it all down. The night, the moment, the situation, the time of day that you were rescued from it. And it is also written the night, the time of day that you decided to, to start whoring again. You better open your eyes if you are hearing my words and you are in a backslidden condition. I know that we are going across social media and you think it's cute to say that I don't go to no church. But you broke covenant relationship. And if your relationship was ever sincere, you would have never broke covenant with God. You may get hit, and it might be a hard blow, but you'll find yourself back in God's presence. Because the Bible says that God is great, and He's greatly to be praised. The Bible says that God's mercy endures forever. The Bible the Bible says that those we hold in his hands, the devil and hell can't pluck them out. The Bible says that he gives strength to the weak and he gives faith to the hungry. The Bible says that his ears are always open to the prayers of the righteous. The Bible says whatever you face in life, when it becomes too difficult for you, he's got your back. The Bible says that salvation is eternal. You can't lose 
salvation, and you can't fake salvation. Because if you got salvation, you'll walk like salvation. If you have salvation, you'll talk like salvation. If you have salvation, you'll move like salvation. If you have salvation, you'll know that you got help in a time of trouble. Get weaker, get looser, but shout to the Lord. Because the Lord is good all the time. He lets some rain fall on the just and the righteous. But for the righteous, God picks them up and He wipes them clean. Every time you confess your mess up, God is just and faithful to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. But when you are out of fellowship, because you broke covenant, your prayer is an abomination to the Lord. The only prayer God will heal is a prayer of repentance 